Hello everyone, this is Colin Sleuth. This is a special edition of Funk the State with Colin Sleuth. It's been a long vacation. I've been busy doing stuff and Sunday night hasn't been good uh, for me to produce a show, so I've kind of been slacking off on that. I hope it hasn't been bothering you guys too much. Um, hope to come back with lots of content starting right now. And um, like I said, I'm going to change my night so that maybe it'd be more convenient for me. Um, if you guys remember, the last video I did was about anarcho houseboating, which sounds like a silly thing, and it is, but it's silly in a good way. Um, and what is anarcho houseboating? Well, it's the idea of building a houseboat. You don't need to have a mortgage. You don't need to get a loan. You don't need to buy land. You don't need to pay property tax if you get a houseboat. I know it's a lifestyle change, etc. It's just another option for how everybody out there can funk the state. I'm looking into building a houseboat just for fun as a vacation spot. And the more we do have options like this, the better off we are. I want to review my whole concept about it. It's like Venice uh, is basically a city of houseboats. And the whole notion of seasteading, Patry Freedom, uh, uh, Patry Friedman grandson of Milton Friedman he's on this seasteading concept building basically mansions houseboats or man condominiums on a houseboat condominiums on the ocean you guys probably know about it you could check into it uh there's a great history of house anarcho houseboating I mean Venice itself was one of the freest civilizations it was a capitalist free civilization at the very beginning of the renaissance essentially set off the renaissance i covered this in my last show i think i've been talking a lot about it so i can't remember exactly um you could have new venice everywhere we could have new venice in, in my town and um i've talked to a guy he, is, he has built a houseboat he is living there i'm going to do a further interview with him and i hope to feature it on the show i just have to get the equipment to make an interview like that work well i'm hoping to get it out there and um i'm hoping to get out there during the summer and film it and so in the next couple of days especially and uh, right now there's a huge festival going on in my town and it's turned from a town of 1,000 people to a town of 5,000 people and overnight and it's great fun everybody wants to drink as much beer and float around in the lake as possible and that's what they're doing so uh great time to promote anarcho houseboating to locals if, and that's what i'm going to do check out some music i plan to float around in the lake um with a keg of beer offering it to everybody i bump into in my canoe so you know if you guys live in the area and it'll be too late by now but maybe we had hung out already you know, next year you can come drink from my keg in the canoe <laughs> so this week I wanted to extend the anarcho houseboating concept and talk about every anarchist libertarian volunteerist favorite subject and that subject is roads of course who is going to build roads and we know it's this is the this is the uh the deadly answer for why we need the state because of roads. More roads is basically the answer to any question that an anarchist ever asks. And so let's think about, I want to think this through about roads, who builds roads. And we, we know this, we're familiar with this concept that we anarchists or libertarian volunteerists or whatever we want to label ourselves as, um, we, we know all the good arguments against why government roads don't make sense. Or, or, or in support of why they don't make sense. We know all these arguments, and, and more recently people have been illustrating the fact that, you know, roads literally are built by the people who build those houses in those neighborhoods and those alcoves. They build, also build the roads. They hire private companies, and private tradesmen are the ones who build it. They, they might work for the government, but really it's individuals who get paid to lay down concrete. I was watching them do it. Everybody's seen them do it. So the roads aren't really built by government, uh, by government bureaucrats. You know, do they need to be managed by government bureaucrats? It becomes the next question. We know that they don't, but a lot of people want to stick us on this question. And that's fine. We we're definitely going to win that argument. We're already winning that argument. But I want to bring a new element into it, and that is 
we we accept the concept that private associations, groups of individuals are the ones who actually build these roads. Now, if you go into the forest near where I live or, or an, an, anywhere into the forest or into the wilderness or into the undeveloped land in your area, um, in my area, we have a lot of trees and logging. So there's all these roads that are built out into the middle of nowhere, gravel roads or logging roads, basically, the, and mining roads. They're old mining roads, old logging roads. The government claims an ownership over the general region and then grants out permission to different private enterprises or at least quasi-private enterprises to go out and build a road because of course the government can't do anything so these private enterprises logging companies go out and they build these roads and they build them out into wilderness and you can get on your four by four truck and drive up one of these roads and it's open to the public as it ought to be um but then they log these areas or they mine them and nobody really knows this, but, or, or maybe some people know this, haven't really thought it through. I never thought it through before. Um, they, de the government demands that these companies decommission the roads or deactivate the road. They have a term for it. I think it's deactivated as if they activated a road and now they're going to deactivate it. Really, it was just plowed through the forest of unowned land. And they then decide that once their, their grant of monopoly privilege to a particular logging company or, or, or quasi-fascist business interest is used up in their mind, then they demand that that company pay, of course that would be passed on to the consumer at some point, uh, the cost of deactivating the road, basically destroying any ability for any normal person to get up there unless they do it on foot you wouldn't be able to take a vehicle up there maybe you can do it with a motorcycle or whatever but normal people can't take their car or their truck up there with the, as they used to be able to do and it's all on purpose they they deactivate these roads on purpose so that you don't go out into nature so that you don't go use them so you don't go explore your birthright which is the natural world around you that isn't already previously claimed by a non-thief so it's not true that the government builds roads and what is actually true is that they destroy them they destroy them specifically to keep you away from nature and that is really the real purpose without government we couldn't deactivate roads we certainly would build them but we wouldn't be deactivating them for the purpose of destroying the individual's ability to explore the world around him so I think it's a important point to realize that private companies would just leave these roads and have signs saying, at your own risk, use this road, obviously. And we would all laugh it off. Instead, they're demanded by the government to deactivate, destroy, tear up the road, prevent anyone from moving free passage, prevent anyone from exploring, discovering, and eventually getting it in their mind. They might want to homestead some resource up that road that's unknown. And, and that's what the government exists for, to prevent you from interacting with the natural world or your birthright, the planet, or the wealth of the world that is available to you. They exist to, to barrier, barrier you away from that. And, um, uh, that's how we should frame the whole roads argument. I, th I think this this point is an important point for me. I'm making it. People are surprised to think about, and it completely flips the table on the who would build the roads. It seems obvious to the status that the government has an interest in building roads, and of course they don't. They have an interest in destroying, blowing them up, tearing out bridges. They they have a, in in my region. There's a resort. It's controversial ski resort that's going to be put on a top of a untouched mountain and people are upset about it because it's going to interfere with the nature around there and so they are protesting this and the government is going ahead and granting privilege to a private company to build this and and since they've done that they are also demanding that roads be deactivated around there so no one can get in there and interfere with their big fascist ski resort plan um 
So they're blowing up bridges that were built, real resources, just tossing them into the river and polluting. They pollute by throwing the road into the river, essentially, and, and preventing individual humans from I interacting with their natural surrounding because it doesn't fit the agenda of the government's control plan for you. So just remember, not only does the government not build roads, it destroys them regularly and with nefarious purpose. Um, I started thinking about this when I went on, up one of these logging roads and found all these decommissioned roads. You'll see a picture of it, maybe associated with this video. Um, and I was also thinking as I drove up there, it took about uh, 40 minutes up this logging road to get up to the lookout of the mountain where I went. And I thought, there is so much untouched, unowned land here with road access. Literally a million people could live there and no one does. And it's just one road on the side of the highway. There's thousands and thousands, there's millions of spots like this all across the world, but in particular in Canada, which is a huge, huge area. There's, there's billions of untouched acres that are undeveloped, that are not being used for anything except for nature's bounty. Humans could live there. There is no such thing as overpopulation. Overpopulation is a complete myth. It's just relative to the resources that are allowed for the given population, restricted by the state. So as I was driving up this mountain, I was thinking, you know, not that not that a million people should live there, but that a million people could live there. And that civilizing nature by homesteading it and putting it to good use through libertarian property principles is not a negative effect on the planet or is not going to, you know, create an overburden on the planet. Instead, it's going to allocate resources in a way as to create more and more life, which really is my, one of my final goals and values. So that being said, I just, I want to highlight the fact that all around on the lakes are, re uh, are resources that are unowned ready to be ha turned into housing in a way that is not unnatural and not destructive, uh, in a way that would bring about a heightened civilization. There's also roads in the middle of nowhere that are being torn up by the government that people could be homesteading prop adjoin uh, adjacent properties to and developing, creating civilization there, benefiting each and every individual humanity and the planet and hopefully destroying, also also lending hand to destroy the state, which is a gigantic impedance to civilization and the progress of life itself. So this is a final goal to try and achieve. Um, you know, and, and a, a lot of times we can be dismayed by people, uh, you know, that we talk to, whether it's on the internet or in real life or wherever, um, or that we see or we overhear or we think about um, the people who may or may not be ignorant. The average person doesn't know all the ins and outs that we talk about on our shows and in, in our, you know, Facebook pages about anarchism. And, you know, most of the world is not familiar with these concepts and this can be dismaying. And it certainly could be dismaying to think, oh, what if the whole world was being pop was populated and all the unknown lands was full of a bunch of status? This would be a terrible thing. I want to focus people's attention on the implicit anarchists around them. Um, what do I mean by implicit anarchists? There's a lot of people, some of the most anarchist people I've ever met, are not people who sit around reading books about self-conscious at real so the self-conscious realizing of anarchist principles they they aren't elucidating it in a rationalist manner like i would like i think you guys do um they just happen to be against the government they just happen to be against rulers they just happen to be against you know illegitimate authority um and sometimes they're only this way in certain capacities they're totally anarchist about war or they're totally anarchist about business or they're totally they haven't thought about the other things or they just don't like the police and these people are all around us these people we meet you know it's possible to meet them every day if you open your eyes to understanding that it's it, anarch, though anarchism is a could be a, a holistic 
philosophy. It also is a description of a type of, you know, social perception. So a lot of people, you know, in our world, I get people coming into the store or at work. I was at work on a roof the other day and uh, I was there. My dentist was the guy who owned the house and he was talking. We were working there. And he was a normal guy, probably a voting citizen or whatever it is. Um, not necessarily a conscious anarchist against the government in all possible respects. But in a passing comment, he made a point that I don't even know why we have the police at all. The police are completely useless and unnecessary. I'm totally against the police. I think they're an illegitimate organization. Now, that is a very anarchist statement. And though he's just a regular guy who hasn't read a Rothbard book or Buchanan or whatever, he... he has an anarchist impulse at least in this capacity and therefore it, there is a reason for an alliance with individuals like that they come into my store where i work at a beer and wine bottle shop and they complain about the government's involvement in liquor distribution and they because they're anarchists in that principle so these people are everywhere we can connect with them we need to build alliances with people and help them understand why they're knee-jerk reaction or their well-thought-out anti-establishmentary viewpoint um, fits into a greater philosophy of rejection of rulers and rejection of the state. Um, that is a way into a lot of these people's heart and it's also a way to learn more about what anarchism can be. We can, we didn't, don't know just from reading a book what can be manifested in an anarchist society. We need to connect with all these people who are doing stuff. Welders, bricklayers, whatever it is, roofers, coffee baristas, you know, to the degree that they are anarchists, let's make alignments with them. Let's let's not reject them for anything. You, you know, let's only reject the, their spoken statements or their actions, which are an, uh, anti-anarchist, I suppose. I definitely don't believe in, you know, making compromises on anarchist principles, but I'm perfectly happy aligning with the person who's a statist in every regard, but is an anarchist when it comes to war. That person I will gladly link arms with and oppose the wars that sadly are being drummed up all around the world by our evil great leaders. So I wanted to highlight those three concepts here on this show. The first one being that the government, not only does the government not build roads, but the government tears them up and destroys them. Also, that there is plenty of room for, for more and more people to homestead and develop and be on this planet. There's no such thing as overpopulation. And... Um, the last and final point is the point about the anarchists, the implicit anarchists around us. They are everywhere. Learn to connect with them. Learn to see how it is that they are anarchists, libertarian, voluntarists in their lives. And learn to connect and make alliances with them on these issues, on this common ground. And I think this is going to be a great way to connect a bunch of people who otherwise would reject a philosophical framework like anarchism um, because they'll start to see how it fits into the greater philosophy. So that being said, this is going to be a short show. I'm sorry to make it sh short. I have all these children dragging at my heels here wanting to go play on the beach and stuff like that. So I need to run. And I just didn't want to be that. I felt bad being disconnected from everybody um, glad to see you guys all getting your shows out. Hopefully, some people are getting better equipment. I've got to get better equipment. Um, we'll get the Shank back on this. He's busy working right now, so we're going to try and carry it forward for him. And he'll be back and stronger than ever, and this network will move forward. So, I hope you guys are having a great summer. And having great fun and funking the state. Oh yeah, I wanted to put a link. I guess I'll put a link up here later on. Funk the state champion of the week. He's awesome. And maybe I'll put some other funk the state champions up here.
because these guys are awesome. Just different ways to funk the state that are hilarious. You guys should check them out. I think they're funny. And maybe if you guys, you know, find videos of people like, you know, that are funking the state one way or the other, celebrating their rejection of the ridiculous, illegitimate authority of government, of monopoly government. And um, you can you can send me those links. You can send them to me at my Facebook page, Colin Sleuth, or anywhere else. But, you know, or you can share them on this video. If you have great videos that are people funking the state, you think could be a funk the state champion, send them to me. I hope you, this was informative to some degree. It's a little bit short. But, um, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys soon. i am be back on VVN every week now, so look out for Funk the State.